what you've got here is a right angled triangle. What makes it a triangle? It's got how many sides? Three. Three, very good. And what makes it right angled? Well, one of the angles is how big? What's the size? How many degrees? Yeah. 90 degrees. 90 degrees, very good. So what I'd like us to do, oh, I left my color over here, is let's mark in that 90 degrees. I'm going to put it here. And your diagram is going to look a bit different to mine, but the three sides, I want us to name them, and we're going to name them in this particular order. Um, we like to use letters to name them. I mean, I suppose I could call these like, you know, John and Elliot and Anne, but that just takes forever. So I'm, mathematicians are famously lazy. We're always looking for fast ways to do things. So I want us to name these three sides just by letters A, B, and C, but please do it this way in increasing order of length. So your shortest side, make that A. Your longest side, make that C. And uh, you can use your ruler, of course, to check which one is which. And then the in-between one, the middle length, call that B. Okay, so for me, that looks like so. Okay. Fantastic. Now, I can see your A, I can see the B, I can see the C. Just watch out that when you draw this new set of shapes around, this one, you've got to be quite careful. These shapes here, I don't just want them to be any old shapes. I want them to be squares. Square, 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 okay? So the way I did this, the way I worked it out was, and if you got it wrong, no big deal, that's what rubbers are for, okay? I rub things off all the time. Uh, if you take this length A, for instance, maybe on your diagram, it's like, four and a half centimeters long. I don't know how long it is because you've all got different ones, okay? Measure that four and a half centimeters, and then draw a new line that's going away from that, which is also four and a half centimeters. Do one of the other edges, and then you can connect them up, and now you've got a whole square, and all the lengths are four and a half, okay? Try to keep everything nice and right angled. That'll make sure your squares look good. Use the ruler to help you. And then just repeat this process for all the others. So you're going to end up with three squares on those three sides. I wonder if this boy's looking for us. You're going to do something which is really easy on your page and really hard on my whiteboard. So let me ask you to look up, even if you're not finished with all of your diagram yet, that's totally okay or you'll get plenty of time while I'm drawing. Here's what I'd like you to do. Can you see how we've got uh, one, two, three squares? Right, three squares. And we actually know their size. If you have another color, use that. But if you don't, it's no big deal, just use the same one. This square over here has a side length of A. And because it's a square, these are all A, aren't they? So what's the area of this square? Anyone tell me? Yeah, go ahead. A. Now, if I wanted to find the perimeter, I'd say A plus A plus A plus A, which would be 4A if I wanted to find the perimeter. Can tell me, someone tell me how much space does it take up? What's its area? Not the length around, but the area inside. Any takers? Hmm. Yeah, what do you reckon? A squared. A squared. In fact, that's why we call A squared A squared, because it's the shape of, it's the area of that square that you're in, okay? So that's A squared. How about this one down the bottom? What's it called? B squared, B squared. very good. One last one up the top, it's the biggest one, and it's C squared. C squared, happy times. Okay, now here comes the tough bit. I want you to take your piece of paper, well it's tough for me, it's easy for you, and I actually want you to spin it around so that, see this big square? Whatever your biggest square is, your C squared, okay? I want that C squared to look like this, so it's flat on the bottom of your page. So you're gonna have a new diagram where C squared is here, and then the triangle sort of sitting on top like this. Does this make sense? Can you turn it around? Well, you Watch very carefully for this part, okay? I'm gonna ask you to put all pens out of your hands because what you're about to do, I want you to make sure you get the steps right. Okay. You're gonna pick up your ruler and you're gonna draw over the top of your squares in a particular way. Watch carefully. I'm gonna use this color because it's nice and dark. This is B squared, this one here. This is where all the action is gonna happen, okay? So watch it carefully. I'm going to put a ruler right up through B squared, right up the middle, like this, okay? So I want you to notice that ruler is going straight up, it's a vertical line, I'm about to draw a vertical line, and I've lined it up with this square down the bottom, your big square, are you okay with that? Can you put your ruler in exactly the same spot as mine? So it's lined up with C squared, and it's going straight up, yep, okay, pen or pencil in hand, we're going to Draw a line straight down B squared, like so. 
just gonna chop it into this piece, like so. All right? So you've just drawn a line right up B squared and chopped it into a piece like so. There you go. It looks a bit like a weird random line, doesn't it? Where's it going? It's not a diagonal, it's not an edge. It just looks weird, doesn't it? Don't worry. Its weirdness will become very important in a second. Okay, next part. Pens down, look up again. We made a vertical line with our ruler before. Now we're going to make a horizontal line. Let me show you where it's going to go. It's on B squared again, this pink one. And it's going to look exactly like this. Okay. So can you see it's horizontal? And instead of starting from this bottom corner, it starts from the right-hand corner. Do you see that? So it goes from the right-hand corner, it goes straight across. In fact, I'm even going to draw from that corner, and I'm just going to draw horizontal there, like so. Okay, it's a bit messy. I even went onto the whiteboard, but that's okay. All right, so you drew two lines, and these two lines have divided up B squared into how many pieces? Four pieces, very good. You can see them there, okay? Now, what I'd like you to now do is pick up your pair of scissors that you have, okay? Now, you're going to cut out your entire shape, okay, the whole thing, okay? But in addition to cutting out A squared and B squared and C squared and also the triangle, see how we put these extra lines on that B squared? I want you to cut those lines as well. Can you do that for me? So you're going to cut out your whole shape. You're eventually going to put this into your book and your A4 piece of cardboard probably won't fit. Okay. But importantly, these lines that we just put onto B squared, you're also going to cut all the way up and across there so you get four pieces out of this guy. Does that make sense? So get ahead and do that. You're all about to do this slightly differently to me, okay, which is actually really important. You'll see why in a minute. So what is Pythagoras' theorem? Pythagoras' theorem is about a relationship between these three squares that we've drawn on the edges, on the sides of this right angle triangle. Let me show you what the relationship is. Uh, a squared, B squared, C squared. Watch me, I'm going to rearrange. The reason why we did all this weird cutting here is so I could rearrange this B squared. Here's how I'm going to do it. Let's see if I remember how. Okay, I think this guy is going to go right down here. I think this one should fit there. Where's this one going to go? I'm going to slide it down. Uh. And my last one goes across here. Fit, please. Yay, it worked. Okay, now you might notice what we've done is we've moved around all the pieces of B squared from up here and fit them into the corners of C squared. You're about to do this yourself, okay? And you can see I've left like a hole in the middle of that big square. And coincidentally, not coincidentally, my last square in here just fits over the top. Now I have to apologize for the fact that my construction is not very good. You can decide whether mine is better than yours or not. But what have we done here? Yeah, do you have a question? Okay, plus, uh, a squared plus B squared plus C squared. Okay, so let's take all of what we just said and put it into, because you don't really want to draw this diagram every single time. You want to, it's a bit of a mess with all the cardboard and all that kind of thing. This green guy here is the small one, right? And we said its area was A squared, right? Now when you add it to this pink square, which was, which was that one? That was B squared. I know I had to rearrange it to fit in, but it's still the same square, right? It's just in pieces. What you end up getting is that all of these are equal to the big square, the one that we didn't touch from the beginning, okay? This guy here, this relationship between the sides of a right angle triangle, that's what we call Pythagoras' theorem. Now here's the important thing, and you're about to do this, right? You might think, oh, Mr. Wu just did, like he prepared this earlier, clearly, and so he, was, he knew it would work with his particular triangle. But it doesn't just work with my particular triangle, it will work with all of yours as well. That's why I asked you to draw all different ones. Now at this point, it's gonna be a bit tricky because you're all in lots of pieces right now, and I have done this before but I want to help you guys to try and rearrange it and fit all your pieces together. Mrs. Lee's is there as well. Until you can get this rearrangement happening in your own diagram. So have a go, put them together, and if it works for you, call us over. Or if you're having trouble, call us over and we'll help.